In 1997, F1 saw, for the first time in two decades, Brothers on the Grid. A 28-year-old double world champion, Michael Schumacher, and his younger brother, Ralph, who was 21 at the time, and in fact was making his debut one year earlier than his brother did. I think it was suffice to say that big things were expected of Ralph. Being the brother of the second youngest world champion at the time, Ralph had a decent junior career with notable results coming second in the German Formula 3 championship on his second attempt in 1995. Michael on the other hand won it but once again on his second attempt. Ralph did taste victory in the Formula Nippon series based in Japan which Ellie Jordan thought it was enough to give him a three year contract at Jordan. I have to say I think Michael's cameo in 1991 Ford Jordan had something to do with Ellie's eagerness to snatch up Ralph. Ralph did enter a more successful time period at Jordan, the team well and truly cementing themselves as one of the leaders of the midfield. For 1997, Ralph was paired with another new face at Jordan, Giancarlo Fisichella, who replaced Martin Brundle, a driver with only one extra year's worth of experience in Formula 1. Fisichella outperformed Ralph in 1997 with two podiums and one near win, but was stopped by a tyre puncture. But Ralph did score a podium in Argentina, finishing third. At the end of the season, it was Fisichella who came out on top with 20 points to Ralph's 13. Fisichella then got what seemed like an upgrade of a move to Benetton for 1998, while Schumacher would partner 1996 champion Damon Hill. Once again, it was another solid season for Ralph, as he was slowly showing he could compete in Formula 1. He did, however, lose the teammate battle once again, but no shame in that as Damon was still a very decent driver. The highlight in 1998 for not just Schumacher but also Jordan was Belgium. Conditions became very harsh to drive in. Great start by Eddie Irvine, field up, look at field up, head into the wall, who was that? Coulthard, Coulthard, Coulthard in the wall. Jamie Coulthard into the wall, they'll stop the race, they'll have to red flag this. Oh, this is this. terrible. Look, oh, this is quite appalling. This is the worst start for a Grand Prix that I have ever seen in the whole of my life. With a deserved red flag being shown, the race restarted, which saw Hackman spin in the first corner. And then on lap 24, Michael Schumacher, who was in cruise control of the race, smashed right into the back of a slow-moving David Coulthard, leading the double world champion to do this. Up to. He's storming down the pit lane, presumably to get... And look at him, look at him, he's... He's saying, I'm going to the stewards. He, he's going to Coulthard. He's going to have it out with David Coulthard. I knew he was angry. You know, his, his neck was, was red and his eyes were out in stocks and obviously the team kept us apart. Jordan were the team to profit from all their rivals suffering and finished in their first 1-2. With Damon leading the way home and Ralph tucked in behind him, not being allowed to race under strict Jordan orders. Ralph then left Jordan to join the mighty Williams for 1999. But not as mighty as you might think. Despite winning both the Constructors and Drivers titles in 1997, they fell off massively in 98 and 99 was not much better. To be fair, the car wasn't terrible. It deserved third in the Constructors at best. But this didn't come down to Ralph. In fact, it was his teammate, a man called Alessandro Zanardi, who had previous experience in F1 with not much success and somehow got a seat at Williams. To show how bad of a season he had, Williams scored 35 points as a constructor in 1999, achieving three podiums with that. Zanardi contributed a fat zero to both. I'm not sure how you could get so far behind on the pace, but maybe. This just showed how good Ralph was. Ralph's 1999 season was a coming of age as he finally won his first teammate battle and with William securing BMW as an engine supplier for 2000, maybe they could challenge for wins. Well, maybe not yet. Partnering another new teammate, and this time it was a young Jensen Button, in which Ralph beat him comfortably to keep his seat for 2001. Because a storm was brewing, and that storm was coming from Colombia in the form of Juan Pablo Montoya. In 2001, Williams produced a very quick car, but it had to be one of the most unreliable cars in F1 history. In the 34 races it participated in, 17 for each driver, it didn't get to the finish line in 18 of those. 7 DNFs for Ralph and a staggering 11 for Montoya. The Colombian remarkably didn't complete his first race until the 5th round in Spain. 
Ralph won three times in 2001, with his first victory coming in San Marino, and a special mention to his win in Canada, where he and his brother came home in first and second. The first time in F1 history that siblings finished 1-2 in a race. Montoya won one race in Italy as Williams were looking to build on their faster car, and Ralph won his first battle with Montoya as the German finished fourth on 49 points, with Montoya two places behind him on 31. 2002 saw McLaren lose its lead driver Mika Hakkinen and with that some of their car performance and Williams were now Ferrari's main competitor for the championship. So would the Schumachers battle it out for the championship? Williams's car was by no means a bad car. They had fixed their reliability issues but the problem was the Ferrari built one of their greatest cars and Michael was on another level, finishing on the podium in every single race on the calendar. Montoya also came into his own and with no reliability issues beat Ralph by 8 points even though he won a race and Montoya didn't so it was all square between the two Williams drivers and in 2003 Ferrari stumbled. Their car was not as dominant as everyone expected and both Williams and now McLaren were hot on their tails. In the first race Montoya was leading comfortably but then spun and gifted the win to Coulthard. Ferrari and Schumacher didn't actually win their first race until the fourth round, which was unheard of in the early 2000s, and it was all looking very close at the start of the season. Williams then won three races in four, with a Ralph winning two and Montoya won. And once again the Schumachers finished 1-2 at Canada, but this time it was Michael on the top step. After Ralph's second consecutive win in France, he sat in third, six points off Reikkonen and 14 off his brother, while ahead of his teammate by only two. It all began to unravel after that win though for the German, having a horrible final 5 races consisting of 2 DNFs and only 1 points finish which got him a measly 5 in Hungary. Montoya however was really pushing Schumacher as he won in Germany and overtook Reikkonen and also closed the gap to 2 points on the German. Michael, being Michael, won 2 of the 3 remaining races and Montoya was out of the running going into the last race. However, Kimi was consistent enough to take the title to the wire in Japan. Unfortunately, it was the same story as Schumacher finished 8th to grab 1 point and to clinch the 2003 World Championship, his 6th and setting a new record, beating Juan Manuel Fangio's 5. Ralph was now 2-1 down to Montoya, so 2004 would be an important year to revive himself. But once again, Ferrari were dominant as they produced one of the greatest cars in F1 history. And Michael was ever dominant, winning 13 out of the 18 races that year. Ralph was very unlucky as he suffered serious injuries in an accident that occurred in the US Grand Prix, resulting in a concussion as well as two minor fractures to his spinal column as he was forced to miss the next six races and so had to forfeit his last season against Montoya. 3-1 it ended up and it could have been closer if things had gone Ralph's way but not a bad record against a very quick driver. For 2005 both Ralph and Montoya left Williams and went their separate ways. Montoya joined McLaren while Ralph joined the up and coming Toyota. At the time though Toyota was a backward step for Ralph as they had been struggling since they joined the grid in 2002. But with millions of dollars being pumped into the team, he was promised a podium challenging car for 2005. And partnering Jarno Trulli would make it an interesting battle, two Grand Prix winners up against each other in a midfield car. And who would have produced a decent car which was able to challenge four podiums in which Ralph scored two. And overall he beat Trulli scoring 45 points to the Italians 43. Ralph was now 30 years of age and was entering his golden years in Formula 1. So 2006. If Toyota could produce a car to challenge for wins, he could once again challenge for the championship. Well, Toyota regressed and got lost once again in the midfield of the grid. Ralph performed well for what he was given and even scored a surprise podium in the third round in Australia. And once again beat Trulli in 2006, scoring 20 points to the Italians 15. His brother Michael would then announce his retirement from Formula 1 and exited the sport after the final race of Brazil with 7 world championships and 91 wins. It was obvious at this point Ralph was not going to match this, but at 31 there was still time for him to win at least one championship. In 2007, Toyota really fucked up and built a car that could barely even score points. A lack of performance with the car combined with an uncharacteristic rookie mistakes from the German happening too often in races saw him actually lose his seat for 2008. He only lost to Trulli by 3 points and had beat him in the previous two seasons, 
Very harsh, I would say, and I'd say many in the paddock would have agreed with me. Before and after Schumacher's departure from Toyota, he was linked with several teams on the grid, including a potential seat at Toro Rosso, which could have led him to having a seat at Red Bull eventually, and we all know how that worked out for a certain German. He also approached McLaren after Alonso left to join Renault, but surprisingly they opted to go for Heki Kovalainen. So 2008 was the first time the Schumacher name was not on the grid since 1990. He had another opportunity to join Formula 1 when three of those joke of a teams joined in 2010. Schumacher was offered a seat by each one. He declined of course, actually wanting to keep his dignity. So that was it for Ralph, with his story in Formula 1. His 11 year career boasted 6 wins, 27 podiums and 6 pole positions over 180 races. It was always going to be difficult for him to live up to his brother's success, being constantly compared to him for all of those 11 years and even very much so in this video. But there was no doubt he was a talented driver and I believe with the right car, maybe, just maybe, he could have won a championship. Ralph is now currently 47 years old, I'm sure like many of us. He is desperate to see his brother return to full health. So what do you think? Did Ralph Schumacher have the talent to win a Formula 1 World Championship?